Well, we can see we've got our little boy, the little prince, still feeding off the last bone, the last leg of his carcass before he's going to have to move off. So he's got himself in a pretty compromised position on this fallen over tree. Doesn't look comfortable at all. There's no sign of any hyenas around. So I think he's just finishing off the last leg and then that's going to be the end of it. And then he's probably going to start moving on and heading off and out of this area. There's no sign of any more meat up in the tree. I've checked around. So this is the last bit of his meal. But is, doesn't he look beautiful in this morning light on this fallen over stump? You can see there he is in his habitat and it'd be quite difficult to actually see him if you didn't know he was here he blends in really well but luckily you know we came across we know exactly where to look and he was at least a little bit out and about but his belly has definitely shrunk quite a bit he's not nearly as full and as fat as what we saw yesterday and like I said, once that bone is finished, I would be very surprised if he actually sleeps here. I think he might head off towards Treehouse Dam. And once he's done at Treehouse Dam having a drink, I think from there he's going to find himself some shade and probably rest for the day. But Hasana, there's really not much left there, my boy. <laughs> I suppose you've got to make use of every little bit. When you're a young growing boy, you can't allow any bit of nutrients to go to waste. Linda, you say happy Catter Day, Hosanna. Well, yes, I forgot that it's Catter Day today. So I suppose we're getting off to a rollicking start with all the spotted cats. It's been an incredible week that we've had. Well, not week, I suppose. The last 24 hours have been insane. So it's good to have spots in the Mara and spots in Numa. It seems to be a common theme these days is the cheetah that side and the leopard this side, which we won't complain about at all. It's really nice to be spending so much time with all of our spotted cats but what is quite cool now is the way Hassan is standing you can see the size of those front paws even though he's still a young male he's got massive paws already look at that see how big those toes are massive toes really is impressive to see that at this age he's already got those big feet and he will grow into them a little bit more his feet aren't as big as tumbers I've checked the tracks from when the two of them were close together and tumbers definitely got bigger feet but it still are not small and then they will still get bigger as well <laughs> are you battling with that hoof Rebecca are you wondering where Shongile is Rebecca I have I honestly don't know um, I haven't heard any updates yet um, I had did ask one or two of the guys they said no they haven't seen anything they've s there apparently was a leopard that was called a Shongile crossing into Juma from Little Gari I think at the beginning of the week or during the last weekend but I, I haven't heard anything else I haven't heard of any other confirmed sightings of her but we know that she's a leopard that does fly under the radar and sometimes even on Juma she spends a week two weeks here and we don't even have a clue that she's here so she likes to walk around in blocks it's not often that she's right out in the open so hopefully we will find some sign of her soon and we'll be able to spend some time with her it's such a beautiful cat as well and i'm sure what she's doing is just staying kind of keeping a low profile staying out of the way after that altercation with tandy there's a number of different other predators around and and other females in the form of shadow and she's probably just trying to make herself sort of quite small and just not bring too much attention to herself at this stage you can hear a woodpecker in the distance as well drumming away at one of these dead trees I just can't see where it is it sounds like a bearded woodpecker just given the size of it oh there it is you see it Seb on this dead tree on the left hand branch you can just see its head so this the is what this tree one oh, the second one at the back oh, yeah. on the left so it looks like a bearded woodpecker from here there it, oh no don't fly away <laughs> so it just flew away now to a tree right in the background there but it definitely looks like a bearded from where i was sitting i'm quite surprised though that there's no hyenas around at the moment <coughs> michael you want to know which of his older brothers does hosanna most remind me of hmm. I'm just trying to think. I would say probably Mishu would be probably the one that he most reminds me of. 
Um, Induna had a slightly different look about him too, and so did Shivambalana. So I'd say Mishu would be the one for me that most resembles Osana at this stage. Unfortunately, with, with Induna and Mishu, funny enough, I didn't get to spend all that much time with them. They they tended to hang around Juma a lot more, and they didn't come down to Little Gari, because at that stage, there was still Mufufunyan was down in the south there, and there was Intima and Sh Safari, and so they sort of stayed much more on this side of the world. So I didn't get too much time with them. I mean, we had a few sightings of them, and I saw them every now and then, but not sort of extended periods of time with either of those two. Shivam Balana we saw a lot more and he eventually at one stage just before I left Chitwa was around Chitwa almost daily at that point. So I spent quite a bit of time with him but Induna and Mishu not as much as I would have liked and in fact Mishu l even less than Induna. But Seb you spent a lot of time with him didn't you? Mm, yes. Do you think yeah, Kosana yeah. reminds you of either one of those right, two? Yeah a little bit. And there we go. Yeah, so Seb yeah. is agreeing with me. He says a little bit like Mishu. Yeah. I wonder where those two are. I know that they've been seen every now and then in the Kruger system, both in Duna and Mishu, but I don't know when the last report was for either of them. It would be nice to know that they're doing well. I'm sure if they were seen fairly recently, and they, they must be big dominant males by now, that they're doing just fine. And the thing is where they shifted is they all went, into, by the sounds of it, into the sort of Kruger and into the southeastern corner of Manyaleti, which is a place that very little traffic goes to and there's also really big areas there of wilderness where there's no roads and so the chances of actually seeing either of those in those kind of places is quite difficult so that's why we can't really monitor how they've grown up it's just fleeting glimpses every now and then of the two of them hopefully Hosanna will not be the same hopefully Hosanna wherever he ends up if it's not here in this area he ends up somewhere where there's lodges and that we can follow how he goes and how he progresses into adulthood whether or not he will become a successful d male that's territorial and raises l and protects lots of cubs, should we say, not raises because they don't really play any part in raising of the cubs. They just will protect an area to make sure that females can raise their cubs. I don't quite know what he's doing with this leg. He's not really crunching it down. seems to just be licking it. Anya, who's 12 years old, hello Anya, and you want to know how old this carcass is, and, well, Anya, this is the leg for the Impala, which was killed on Wednesday morning, Wednesday night, uh, sorry, Tuesday night, so, because they found it Wednesday morning, so it's now three days, three full days old, and that's really the last of it. The only reason that he's still here and still eating the Impala carcass, which is slightly older, is because Tandi killed the Steenbok here, and he seems to have stolen that away from Tandi, and has fed on it himself, which means that he had another carcass to keep him busy, and that's why the Impala carcass has lasted a little bit longer. If it was just the Impala carcass, in all likelihood he would have finished it he last, not last night, the night before, and would have been done with it by yesterday. And I don't think he still would have been here, but he still had his Steenbok to finish yesterday, and then the scraps of this Impala that he's now finishing off at the moment. It's interesting though, I've, I've watched a number of different leopards feed off impalas in my time and the adults generally crunch these leg bones down quite quickly. It doesn't take long for them, particularly the males. Somebody like Tingana would have hoofed that down in about two seconds flat. But it's, Hosanna seems to kind of be not really sure as to how to get to all the meat. He hasn't really bitten through everything. He's, he's kind of licking it, although it seems as though he's got it now. He's busy crunching down now, so maybe he's worked it out. And there'll be nice marrow inside that leg, which is probably quite tasty, although I can imagine a three-day-old impala leg can't be that pleasant to actually feed off. Sky, you want to know if... Hosanna has a typical male leopard personality, or is he a more approachable leopard? Well, Skype, that's really, there's no typical male leopard personality. They're all different. They've all got their own ways about them. We know that Tingana is a male that just likes to move and patrol, and all he sort of does is move around. 
Whereas Anderson is a little bit more shy. Mafufanyan, when he was here, was as bold as anything. You would find him lying out in the open. You would spend lots of time. As, if you found Mafufanyan, you used to have a guaranteed long sighting with him. He's very seldom he used to try and lose you. Um, so it just depends on the males. They Some of them are different. Uh, there's no typical sort of male persona that they take on. Um, he does have that sort of male clumsiness in a way which is quite funny because they the males tend to do all kinds of things that make me laugh the females tend to be a little bit more particular about what they do whereas the males tend to mess around and be a little bit more goofy and seem to always get themselves into problems it's like last night with tingana when we were trying to follow him at one point he went up into a tree and he was on the tiniest branch that you could imagine in fact he almost fell out about three times and they seem to do those kind of things a lot the males more than what the females do the females tend to be a little bit more calculated in how they go about their day i was just listening now i can hear some squirrels and some birds that are alarm calling towards treehouse i wonder if tandy and shadow are not still around this particular area maybe not both of them but I wonder if one of them isn't still lurking around Treehouse Dam. I, I don't think anyone saw Tandy yesterday. Um, in the morning when we came here, we didn't really look for her. But I wonder if maybe one of them is still in this area. Oh, Hosanna, are you enjoying that leg? Nothing like an Impala leg to start one's catter day. Now we're going to sit with Hosanna and enjoy the beautiful morning light on him. And while we do that, let's go back to James with his spotted beauties in the Mara. <laughs> 